Hey, partner. Welcome to the behind the scenes. <laughs> Action! Hello, hi, hello. Welcome to the behind the scenes for Jeff Bezos versus Mansa Musa. Mansa Musa? Mansa Musa was a 14th century Muslim ruler of the Mali Empire. Mansa Musa was said to be the wealthiest man on the planet. And some people have calculated that Mansa Musa's wealth was larger than any person that has ever lived since. And Jeff Bezos is, uh, was, and I'm sure probably will be again sometime, the wealthiest person present. And so we thought it would be an interesting matchup. That's Mansa Musa. That's perfect for Screw. I met Screw over the internet. He's a reactor. Great reactions to rap battles. He catches everything. He's a rapper himself. I jumped on a site for his. He jumped on a site for a mine. Well, Horus men be evil, exploiting people that's ported in. Jacking up the prices, cause while in crisis, you force to spend. I'm gonna text him right now, see if he wants to do it. I'm just gonna text him like the bat signal and then a picture of Mansa Musa. We'll see if he gets back to me. Bat signal went out. He caught it. He thought I was spam first. I guess that happens. Responded back. He's good. Screws a lock. He did. So we rolled out. Now that's a blue origin. Take one small step towards a different profit. <laughs> my name is Scoofy John. I am a musician, hip hop artist. I love giving my opinion on hip hop, and I love making hip hop. You dig? It's screw face in the place, and I'm about to handle you. Heard that you a hooper, well, these shots about to damage you. But this ain't no suicide drill to check your stamina. I'm ill, this suicide for real for any challenge. I do have to say that a lot of this is in parts of you guys, because there was a large contingency of people out there who are screw face fans. I'm a fan. I've been a fan of his work for some time. He reviews a lot of videos, he makes his own music, but I stumbled onto him watching reaction videos of Epic Rap Battle's history. I'm the Lion King, man, but that's a messed up circle of life. Ah, there it is! Ah! <laughs> I saw a picture in my tag pictures of my face on Mansa Musa and Peter's face on Jeff Bezos. And it went crazy. A bunch of people, yeah, this needs to happen, but this and the third. So he RB delivers for the fans, you know? So they got me. Working with Screw is just how you'd think. Amazing. He's pro, so much energy. And he's funny, you know? He's like got comic timing, he's got comic facial expressions. My onset experience was dope. That's the first time I've ever done a production that big. And the crew was super dope. All of them were very accommodating. It was a very fun set. It's great, except for when you were like, yeah, this is good. It was great funny, but you can't like it. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to Screw. If you don't know his channel, check him out. Subscribe, he's got good shit. Thanks again, man. Thank you very much. Here's a nugget of advice to get your union problems handled. Want workers that don't piss? Hire some camel. This beat was by Flawless Tracks. And Flawless Tracks is a producer we've actually worked with a long time ago on Adam and Eve. I made a map, motherfucker, and I'm reading it too. Gives me specific directions how to fuck with you. I don't think any beat got the live show environment moving the way that Adam and Eve beat did. Bam, 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 bam. That, mm, Flawless Tracks, you've got a gift. We did put extra stuff in the beat. Pete was keen on introducing African instruments that were native of the time. I found this instrument called a kora, and that's like the official instrument of Mali. But daddy loved unicycles more than him, so we rolled down. Now that's a blue origin. Then for Bezos's beat, we added some computery sounds. Right? Has this, to me, this had this like factory, robot factory vibe to it uh, that I really enjoyed. And then here's another sound that just kind of goes with it, just gives it extra rhythm. 
But again, it's very glitchy, right? It's very synthetic. So some gloopy blue boops. And this is what you get when he comes in. You get this massive new direction in the sound. Right? Listen to how much different that is from Mansa Musa's breakdown. Right? It's, it's moving. It's natural. You want to dance to it. But this one, you just kind of want to, I don't know, to it. Very different. Not dancing. It's nerdy. At Amazon, our product research is phenomenal, but I've never heard your story. Can I do an audible? <laughs> Cut. Jeff Bezos is bald, and I'm bald, and Pete's bald, so probably some people are like, how'd you choose between you and Pete to play Bezos? It seemed like a part that I would play. Skinny, nerdy guy with bad posture who's good at computers, that would be me, right? But the more I looked into it, the more I felt confident that Lloyd was the right casting for Jeff Bezos because Jeff Bezos, as nerdy as he is, he's he's not. He's got a bro energy. Old Jeff Bezos is like hobbity and nerdy and shirt kind of sloughed over and slouchy, but like somewhere in there, he finally figured out like, I, I have all the money on the planet. I can afford like a trainer and a nutritionist. I think I could bring that energy at the end and that was kind of what the deciding factor was. I look more like Jeff Bezos now. Pete looks more like Jeff Bezos a long time ago. So I think we went with me because we wanted to do him now. Pete said to me right away when we started working on the character, dude, it's all about the laugh. It's all about that. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking <laughs> <laughs> that fucking Bezos laugh is the whole thing. Really, almost nothing else matters. <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd recorded all the like, gosh, all, honestly, a hundred different Bezos laughs. <laughs>, <laughs>, <laughs> That's my, this is my favorite one. We divided the editing work, as always, amongst a few of us. One of the characters went off to me to work in After Effects, and I handled Jeff Bezos. Then the Mansa Musa verse was edited in After Effects by our very own Javier Sanchez Blanco. And I think he's going to say hello, so... Take it away, Javi. Hi, my name is Javi and I do VFX for ERB. The first thing I did was the lava for the Terminator background with some soap I bought on a supermarket and then I used in the shower. So the job consists in three parts. First, keying, then comping, which means putting the characters in the backgrounds and then coming up with some movement for the camera based on the performance cut from Ross. So what's key in exactly? Let's say we have this shot. We have our character and our green background. So what I do is cut all the green part out. One eternity later. Wow, look at this beautiful character cutout. Of course I did this on the computer, not on paper. You might be wondering, what about the backgrounds? Some of the time they come from stock footage. Other times we have to create them ourselves. For example, for this one, for Tombuktu, Pete told me he couldn't find any good pictures from the angles he wanted. So what I did was try to recreate in 3D the background from some references he sent me. But sometimes we have special shots. Like on this one, we had the Catalan Atlas shot. I had to recreate the Atlas from the references and the text, which was very fun too, because it was in Catalan, which is very similar to Spanish. So I could understand it very well, except for the medieval characters that they use for abbreviation, like the long S. 
and that thing that's per pertida. And that's basically what I do. Lyrically lethal, I'm relentless, African first immune. If I wanted to waste my life on desert spice, I'd wash too. What do we give McKenzie? 40 billion? So what? <laughs> Earning every penny back only took me a month! I am back with Brittany. Everybody is familiar with Brittany. We're about to do the fastest makeup in ERB history. I mean, it's just not. It's just not too long a walk for me to go from here to like here. We are gonna do the droop eye. Uh, Jeff Bezos has got a bad case of a droop eye. When I think Jeff Bezos, I think droopy eye. The one droopy eye. His eyelids just look very different. Small prosthetic being added. So I definitely think it's adding this yeah. bulk. And then I'm just gonna put a little piece to keep it like down. And I think we're Sweet. good. Our makeup and hair people are so on it. The difference in what it did it just puts your face in a slightly different position and that's all it takes sometimes. Yeah, you don't look like Lloyd. It's crazy. Great. It's the first time I ever got to have makeup, so it's a big day for me. Believe it or not, those eyebrows are not real. Cue the dun dun dun. Yeah, they made them thicker in the thing. They said it gives you more of like a powerful look, more of a so it's like, hey. A little bit of action fire in the eye. Woo! Got too much fire? No! Okay. I don't think so. The harem of what I had on my woman, Jeff, and she cut you in half! We were playing around with that Timbuktu books. I was thinking something about like, I wouldn't pay two bucks for your Timbuktu books. What about Tim Cook? Like, I got more wealth than Elon. I topped Tim's bucks too. Hey! You know? This character of Mansa Musa was discussed heavily, specifically by one of our patrons named the former Prez. I'm gonna give him a little shout out because not only did he help us shape the character of Mansa Musa, but he also gave us a very critical detail about how he might look. We originally had Mansa Musa's costume planned to be just besplendent in gold. We had a Mr. T antique joke, which was really funny. I went from pipsqueak geek to gym freak physique, and now I'm here to flex my winning streak on Mr. T Antique. But most likely a devout Muslim would not wear gold. Gold jewelry, specifically on a man, is not looked upon in a good light. So it would be weird for Mansa Musa, who was a devout Muslim. It would be weird for him to be wearing gold. And I think that when you have a personality and an actor and a talent as big as Screw, he doesn't need much to like come right at you. Yeah, I already have the spirit of an African king in me, so you know. <laughs> there is one woman, Jeff, and she cut you in half. God damn, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> With Jeff Bezos, there's that meme of him in the muscly vest and the sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> Your boy's just Jack, bro. <laughs> He works out a lot now too, so he's got like arms and muscles and stuff. So we thought that would be funny to show off with the aviator glasses. And then there's also the spacesuit Jeff Bezos. <laughs> so stupid, I love it. He just went on that trip to space and he wore a cowboy hat. Kind of hilarious if you ask me. And then there's like your run of the mill corporate boardroom Bezos. Like, I look like a manager. <laughs> <laughs> So we started with this suit and then was this issue of like, how do we get spacesuit Jeff Bezos in there? Why is he there? What happens? And I don't remember how we just stumbled onto the idea of a, a wall of boxes that Bezos would just burst through. <laughs> <Now that. laughs> the toughest thing was not getting hit on the head with the boxes as they went through. I think we ended up using Lloyd's first actual full take of, <laughs> of going through the boxes. And if you look carefully, you can, <laughs> you can see it in his face. He's like, oh, that was awesome. That was like pure joy on my face. I was just like, that was so fun. I felt like a kid. This was a bucket list experience. Hopefully I'll get to do it again. I'm available whenever, let me know. 
My album, Village Boy, is out right now on all streaming platforms. Check it out. Thank you, Epic Lloyd, Nice Peter, and the whole ERB crew. Y'all mean the world to me. I hope you enjoyed watching Jeff Bezos versus Monsa Musa. We've got another very exciting battle coming up. Everybody stay healthy out there. Oh. <laughs> Subscribe, man.